Let's discuss a case study of someone who was binge eating and dealing with binge eating disorder. What I wanna show you today with this case study is this person's metabolic profile and what that looked like for her based on her pattern of eating. Now, one thing I just wanna clarify real quick before we dive into this case study is that there is a big difference between a binge and just overeating. Now, overeating is something that a lot of people do and is okay and it happens, right? It's when you've eaten dinner and you're kind of full, but that one thing looks really good, so you get a second helping, and so you're full, but, you know, it's manageable. Binge eating is actually a lot different than that. Binge eating is when someone eats what's described as an exorbitant amount of food that's more food than any person would typically eat in one sitting. So it's not just an extra helping or dessert on top of dinner when you were already pretty full. It's eating, like... 12 donuts, a gallon of ice cream, a whole large pizza, and seven candy bars. And I'm not saying that to be facetious, that's really the amount of food that it would be. There's a lot of people whose binges are upwards of 10,000 calories. The other thing about binging is that it does happen in a discrete period of time. A lot of times what it'll be is someone, many times it happens at night, someone will be sitting home alone at night and in an hour they'll eat all of that food that I just mentioned. And a lot of times with binge eating as well, it's very compulsive, meaning the person can recognize that they're really full and they shouldn't keep eating, but they can't stop themselves. So that's the difference there between binging and just overeating and I just wanted to clarify that. Now, the particular person that we're gonna talk about today in this case study was dealing with binge eating disorder. And her binges at night were about a 5,000 calorie binge, and it was happening five to seven days a week. So it was happening really frequently. And she was frustrated because she tried to fix it on her own, right? She figured that she would just stop. She was like, you know what, I've gotta stop this, I'll just end it. And she kept trying to do that, and she kept, in her words, failing, right? She wasn't actually failing. She just needed that extra support from a dietitian and a therapist. But that's the tricky thing about binging is a lot of times people try to convince themselves that they can heal on their own, but it's best to get support. Now, anyways, this particular person was binging that frequently. And what she was actually doing, and this is common amongst a lot of binge eaters, is she was under eating or restricting during the day unintentionally though. So what would happen is she would have that binge at night, right? And what a lot of people describe post a binge is actually a binge hangover. They say that a lot of times it actually feels like a hangover from alcohol the next morning. And this client that I'm telling you about was experiencing that in the mornings. So she would wake up in the morning and feel really awful. She would have a headache, her stomach would still hurt, and she just had no interest in eating breakfast. So of course she wouldn't eat breakfast. So the first time that she would eat for the day would be about like one o'clock maybe, like a little bit later of lunch. And then what would happen is she would have a pretty standard lunch, then she might have a snack, and then she would have a kind of standard dinner and then the binge would happen and that cycle would repeat. And again, that's not the case for everybody with binge eating disorder, but it is very common to get stuck on that cycle. So what we wanted to do is, of course, help her manage that. And she was in therapy, and then she came to see me. And that's really important because, as I mentioned, those are going to be two really good supports for working on healing binge eating because, yes, binge eating is physiological, right? She was clearly on what we call that binge and restrict cycle, but also binge eating is emotional. In many cases, there's an emotional aspect behind food that starts to trigger that binge. And when you have the physiological piece and the emotional piece that creates a perfect storm. So I was here as the dietitian to help work on the physiological piece and we worked in concordance with our therapist to work on the emotional piece. So now let's take a look at her metabolic test so you can see how her body was functioning with doing these binges. As you can see here, her metabolism actually stayed pretty high. And now that makes sense, of course, right? Because even though I don't want her on this cycle of restricting and binging, 
total calories that she was eating for a day was upwards of 7,000 if you include the binge, right? So ultimately her body's metabolism did not drop because she is still getting in the calories that she needed per day. Now, of course, again, I'm not promoting that behavior and it's not a healthy behavior to be on this binge and restrict cycle, but when it comes down to pure numbers, she was getting in the calories that her body needed, so her metabolism stayed pretty high. And as you see, it's up here at this 24 100 ish, which is above where we would predict it to be. Now, on that same note, and for the same reason, you can see that her protein metabolism was normal, meaning that her body was not breaking down too much of her muscle mass. Now, let's take a look at another piece of the metabolic test that I don't often go over in case studies because. To be totally honest with you, in some case studies, that information doesn't really enhance the value or the understanding of that person's case, but for this person, it does. So these two numbers here are the fat utilization and carbohydrate utilization that this person's body was going through. Now, one thing to note here is that before doing the metabolic test, someone is fasted. They're, they have to be fasted for at least four hours, but for this person, it was actually overnight. And the reason that that's important is because the fat utilization is exactly that, your body's breakdown of fat on your body. The carbohydrate is actually your breakdown of food. And after having been fasted overnight, your carbohydrate utilization or your body's breakdown of food really should be at zero. So what we can see here is that's of course not the case. Her body was still breaking down a lot more of that carb substrate, meaning her body was still working on digesting the food from the binge that she had had the night before coming into the test. And so how that translates is her body's spending so much time breaking down all of this food that her body's not as effectively burning fat in a fasted state, which is why that number is a little bit lower as well. So these two things kind of go hand in hand, but it's a result of the binge the night before and her body trying to compensate and break down all of that food still the next morning. So what do we do in a case like this? Now, of course, as I mentioned, this person was already in therapy, which is great. I always recommend someone dealing with binge eating be in therapy in addition to seeing a dietitian. But from a nutrition standpoint and the physiological piece, we needed to get this person to actually eat more earlier in the day, even if she had a binge at night. So this person's resting metabolic rate was about that 2,400. We added for the fact that she was getting up and moving around and added for exercise, making her total daily needs about 3,200 calories a day. So we recommended that she eat about 2,800 to 3,000 every day during the day, so not including a binge. Now her immediate concern was, I'm gonna eat all that food and then I'm gonna still binge and now I'm just eating that much more, which I understand is a very valid concern. But the reason we wanna do that is because we wanna break that binge restrict cycle. We wanna get her eating enough earlier in the day so that physiologically speaking, she's not hungry in the evening, getting her to then think like, oh, maybe I'll go here and get this, or maybe I'll grab this, right? And then if she's not physio physiologically hungry at the end of the day, she can more appropriately work on the emotions that are leading to that binge. Now for this particular person, she was able to increase those calories pretty quickly. It probably took her about two to three months to work on getting in that much earlier in the day. But at that point, after about three months, she was able to get in the 2,800 to 3,000 every day during the day, not including a binge, which was great. And what that had already done was decrease the frequency of binges. Even if in that three month period, she went from binging five to seven days a week to only about two to three days a week, right? Now, of course, ultimately we wanna get it so that she doesn't binge anymore, but that took time. And so in the next subsequent months, which was about six to eight months after that, she continued to work on fueling her body. She occasionally had a binge and it decreased to where she had a binge maybe once a month. And by the time she stopped working with me, she hadn't had a binge in about four or five months. So you have to really trust the process with that and realize that what we have to do is nourish your body well earlier in the day to get you off of the binge restrict cycle and so that you can work on the emotions behind the binge and that compulsion. Thank you for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe.